Hey, I'm Tom from Shaw, and welcome to another instalment of the Shaw Whiteboard Series. Today, we're going to cover the differences between analogue and digital radio microphones. For many years, analogue radio microphones have ruled, but in recent years, we've seen the influx of digital systems. It's not necessarily fair to say that analogue is better than digital or vice versa. You have to look at the price point at which they're pitched. A high quality analogue system is likely to be better than a, a low quality digital system, whereas a high quality digital system is likely to be better than a lower quality analogue system. In recent years, Shaw has brought out a number of digital systems. These are GLXD, QLXD, ULXD and also Microflex Wireless. But the two main key components between analogue and digital, where things differ, are firstly audio quality and RF quality. The majority of analogue radio microphones will use frequency modulation to carry the signal. This is where the frequency that they operate at is varied ever so slightly during the time that the transmission is on air. There are some physical limitations to frequency modulation, notably dynamic range and also frequency response. The frequency response of an FM radio wave is about 60 Hz to 16 kHz and the dynamic range is about 50 decibels. So how do we get 100 dB of audio down into just 50 dB or so? Well, we can use something called companding. So we, in the transmitter, we'll firstly compress the audio dynamically from 100 dB to about 50 or so, then transmit it across the airwaves, and then in the receiver, we'll then expand it. This compressing and then expansion we call companding. In old analog systems, we used to use a fixed ratio Modern systems will use something called audio reference compounding. These systems only compress when they need to and ends up with a much more natural sounding system. In a digital system, the first thing that happens in a wireless microphone is that the audio gets picked up by the capsule and then the first thing that happens in the transmitter stage is the analog audio is digitized. Because it's digitized, we don't have to worry about the frequency limits or the um, dynamic range limits of FM carrier waves anymore. The carrier wave is now going to be transmitting just ones and zeros, so dynamic range is no longer a problem. Also, we're no longer limited by that 60 hertz up to about 16 kilohertz frequency response of an FM radio wave. Now clearly it will depend upon the frequency response of the microphone, the human voice or the instrument that you're using but the digital systems at least have the capability to transmit across the full range of human hearing. The second main thing with digital radio microphones that they have over analog is their spectral efficiency. Now this comes down to the way that frequency modulation works. If you start with a single frequency on air oscillating at say 610 megahertz, with no audio going into that uh, radio microphone for an analog system, this frequency will just sit there as it is. In order to carry the audio signal, you have to modulate or adjust or change the frequency. So, as audio goes into the microphone or into the body pack, the frequency will actually deviate from 610. This deviation takes up spectrum and isn't necessarily predictable because with a, th a small amount of deviation or a small amount of input signal going into the microphone, the deviation will be lower with a larger or stronger signal, that deviation will be much more wide indeed. A digital system is only ever moving ones and zeros, so the traditional way of modulating the analog frequency we can no longer do. Instead of this, we have to use some different modulation schemes. These ones use keying or moving stuff in discrete steps, namely frequency shift keying, amplitude shift keying, and phase shift keying, where in turn you adjust the frequency in discrete steps, you adjust the amplitude in block steps, and you also adjust the phase of the radio wave in discrete steps as well. That means that if you look at a, a digital radio microphone on a scope, you'll just see a fixed block of noise. This won't change if you're whispering into it or shouting into it, it will just look exactly the same. This fixed deviation, if you like, or fixed bandwidth that each microphone takes up allows it to be much more predictable as to how much spectrum each transmission on air will need to take up as well. This means that filters can be placed much closer and allow more frequencies to be stacked much closer together. Bear in mind though that a limiting factor of this will be the transmitter linearity or its ability to get really close to other frequencies. Thank you for watching this Shaw whiteboard video. To learn more, please go to the shawblog.co.uk. Thank you.